computer, Natalie? Oh, hello, Morris. I wondered who it was when I held the tape right up. Yeah, well, I just wanted to get the local cricket fixtures typed up before the week started. Uh-huh. Did you, uh, go to the march on Saturday? Yep. How was it? Well, I didn't feel the need to send a telex to Kerry Packer, but is <laughs> that why? Yeah, finished. Nobody else in yet, I suppose? No, only the switchboard girls. Oh, yeah, I wonder what's on my desk this morning. I'll tell you what to expect. There's been a great run of phone calls about something in the sky over Hampstead Heath last night. An unidentified flying object, no less. Oh, I see. You've been nosing round, have you? Well, I'm a news hand, Morris. Curiosity's the only thing I've got going for me. Well, you're a professional, I'll give you that. More than can be said for anyone else around here. Hey, just a minute. Uh, who are you going to put on the story? What story? The UFO story. Why? You got your eye on it? Well, I'm a sports writer, mate. On the other hand, I'd say that UFO watching was a sport, wouldn't you? Well, at a stretch, I think I could agree. Good. I hope you'd say that. Sounds a real guess. Aye, well, what's more to the point is who else I'd send if I didn't send you. I mean, not only is this paper staffed entirely by amateurs, well, you and me accepted, of course. Of course. But the main problem is we simply don't have enough staff to run the paper properly. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, well, Liz was going down to Milton Monk's yesterday for lunch. Let's hope she got the all clear to get a replacement for Jill Moo. Liz was going down to Milton's on Sunday. How did you know that? Oh, I know everything goes on round here, Morris. Did she tell you? Never mind. Hey, listen, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. You know these allowances we get paid? A car and meal allowances, that type of thing? Uh-huh. Well, they're laughable. 18 p a mile, the price of petrol it is now. It's ridiculous. Oh, well, don't complain to me. Bring it up at the chapel meeting. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about. You don't seem to have many of those round here. Oh, that's because Debbie's father of the Herald Chapel and she's been away till just recently. Well, there's the lady you want arriving now, Gray. With the late shift. Are you referring to me, Morris? No. Because I'm not late. And anyway, some of us have had a day's work to do before we get here. Bobby, be giving you problems? You could say that. Oh, well, the great thing about kids, my mother told me, is they grow up. Yeah, very slowly. Hey, listen, Debbie, I've just been talking to Morris. Don't you think it's time we got our expenses a bit more in line with inflation? Yeah, good idea. So what about calling a union meeting? I could put up a notice or two for you. Look, don't ask me to stay late this week, Gray. I've got to be home early. The girl who's minding Sam's gone and got herself an evening job. Well, how about lunchtime, then? Debbie's a secret mother in the lunch hour. She nips home to see the baby. Oh, shut up, Morris. You could stay for a meeting one day, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I could. So what about today? Provided all the staff know about it. Might as well get things moving as soon as we can. That's my motto. Hello, Shell. Here, aren't you at work today? Uh, I'm, on, I'm on my way there now. Just been to the dentist. Where are you off to? Laundrette. I wish to goodness they'd open that one by us again. It's no joke pushing a pram full of babies and carrying a bag of washing to the top of this hill. Two babies? You've got Sam in there as well, then? Yeah. Oh, he's gone under the blanket. There he is. Oh, yes. He's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he look an angel? He was asleep last time I saw him, too, the night of the Herald party. Yeah? Well, he hasn't slept much between then and now, believe me. Oh dear, a bit of a handful, is he? Yeah. He's all right, though. He doesn't look a bit like Debbie, does he? Not really. Oh, well. How's Moonshine? She's fine. I wondered who was looking after Sam when I saw Debbie was back at the Herald. Yeah? Is it an awful lot for you to cope with, Carol? I mean, Moonshine's only, well, what, how old? Seven months. Yeah. Didn't you get a bit jealous? You know, I think she does, actually. Still, she'll just have to get used to it. Here, look, I'd better go, Shell. Sam will be waking up soon for his mid-morning fees, and I want to be back from the laundrette before he does. You know, I have to feed him, like, before I can give Moonshine her dinner. Oh, I don't know how you do it. Oh, they do this sort of thing in day nurseries all the time. I don't know how they do it, either. Right. Now, can you just tell me, Mr Watkins, exactly what it was you saw? Well, I was out jogging. I like to jog. I'm a bit of a fitness freak, actually. Yep. And what time of day was this? Dawn. I always get up with the dawn. I see. So you're jogging over the heath at dawn. And what happened? Well, it was a very clear morning. No clouds or anything. This was yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday at dawn. Yep. And I wasn't looking at the sky. I was running uphill, see, and very often I look at the ground when I'm running uphill. Yeah? But I don't know why, yesterday I looked up at the sky. Something made me look up. Yeah? 
Now, I don't normally believe in these things. But you mustn't think I'm one of these people who are always seeing things. Yeah, well, what did you say? It was round, sort of plate-shaped. I see. And it had a sort of halo round it. Yeah, like a ring round the moon, you mean? Yeah, sort of. Only it throbbed. The plate did, or the halo? The halo. And how big was it? Oh, quite big. Well, like how big? As big as a car? As big as a house? Uh, oh, about as big as a bicycle wheel. Ah, so not very big then. Well, it seemed pretty big to me for something travelling across the sky. Yeah, now you say travelling. Which direction was it moving? Well, it was moving across the sky, all sort of silver, like a, like an aeroplane. And the sun was just coming up, see, it sort of glinted on it. And it sort of came in slowly, as if it was going to land. Like one of them things you see kids throwing. Frisbees? Yeah, like one of them landing. And did you see it land? I oh, know, it didn't. If it did land, it came in behind some trees. Did you go and look? Well, I, I didn't go too close, seeing as I didn't know what it was. But from where I was, I couldn't see nothing. It just seemed to have vanished into thin air. I went back later with me, mate. And could you see anything then? No. Not even an old bicycle wheel? Oh, uh, listen, don't you knock it, mate. I was terrified. Yeah, sorry, it's just, you know, I'm a natural sceptic. Listen, do you have any theory as to what this object might have been? Oh, it was definitely something from another planet. Definitely. Damn, he's gone. You usually swear to yourself. Oh, hello, Shudley. No, I was looking for Dickon. I was feeling a bit fed up, so I thought I'd come and see you. Oh, dear. What are you fed up about? Oh, I don't want to talk about it now, not here. I'll tell you over lunch. What time are you going for lunch? Oh, Shudley, I'm sorry I'm not going out for lunch today. We've got an NUJ meeting at one o'clock. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'd much rather be having lunch with you, believe me. Well, come and have tea with me and Cliff instead after work. Are you sure? I never seem to be out of your place these days. Of course I'm sure. And Cliff won't mind. No, why should he? Well, I don't know that I'd always want to have people in. If I had a nice wife like you. Cliff doesn't mind. Anyway, if you come this evening, you can do me a favour in return. What's that? Drive me over to my open university meeting. Oh, of course I will. You don't have to give me my tea for me to do that. You know you only have to ask. I know, Maurice, and I'm asking. Hello? What's this arm breaking up? You're not breaking anything up. You can't keep any secrets from McFarlane. You've just got a suspicious mind, Gray. That's your problem. And you, Mrs. Edwards, have beautiful eyes. Oh, my God. Anyway, how did you get on with your UFO story? Well, about four of the people you gave me are professional UFO spotters. We can forget about them. And of the others... One thinks it looks like a bicycle wheel, one saw a canister, and the other one just felt the waves. The waves, that's what the lady said. They woke her up, she said. Hmm, doesn't sound as if you've got a very conclusive picture of this object. Uh, no, not exactly, but you know me, I'll keep trying. Right, Debbie, what can I do for you? Well, you know we had a chapel meeting this lunchtime, don't you? Word had reached me, yes. Well, basically, it's about our allowances. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to admit they're ridiculous, the way prices have gone up all over this winter. Well, unfortunately, our expense account hasn't. And in any case, I can't put up the car allowance without consulting Milton. Oh, well, we know that, Liz. Look, I'll be seeing him in the week, uh, and I'll bring all this up then. Yeah, well, I brought you a copy of the resolution. What it boils down to is we want 25p a mile car allowance, one fifty for lunch, and £2 for evening meals. Yeah, these are quite big increases, you know, Debbie. Yeah, well, there's been some quite big price increases this winter and all. Yes. Well, we'll see what Milton says. Oh, Debbie has gone, has she? Only I didn't see her go and I didn't want to interrupt you. Yes, she's gone. I bought your letters for you to sign. Oh, thank you, Verity. Uh, oh, by the way, did Mr. Monk's secretary ring back to say what time you wanted to see me on Wednesday? No, she didn't. Well, could you ring her and find out? I'll take it. Fine. Hello? Uh, Miss Warner, I've got Mr. Tyson on the line for you. Ah, put him through, will you? Uh, Liz? Hello, Peter, yes? Yeah? Oh, darling, I've just had a phone call from Jeremy's headmaster. And? He wants to see us. Mm hmm. Which well, sounds pretty serious, Liz. He said he thought Jeremy was very upset indeed. Oh, I see. He wants to see us both. You 
You will come, won't you? Yes, yes, of course I'll come. Wednesday afternoon, 2.30. Yes, well, I think that'll be all right. Well, it's got to be, please. All right, all right. Look, I can't talk now, Peter. I- I'll try and get home early this evening. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh, come in, Verity. Mr. Monk says the only time he can see you this week is Wednesday at three o'clock. 